Here's another uh, linearization problem. Uh, some of this might be a little advanced, uh, but follow through those parts. So here we have the case. <coughs> we have some, uh, you know, it's, it could be a ceiling or whatever, uh, something solid. There is a pivot point uh, with no friction. There's a rod of length L that doesn't stretch or flex. There's a mass, M, on that bob. Uh, and then the bob is displaced some amount, and uh, it's pendulum. It goes back and forth, back and forth. And so let's uh, do some Newton's second law on this. If we uh, create a, a coordinate system here, so, uh, you know, y and x, then what forces do we have? Well, along the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction will be zero because the rod is inextensible, it doesn't flex. So that would be tension in the positive y direction minus a um, the little theta here. So it's going to be uh, Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's going to be mg, yeah, sorry, I, was, I know what it should be, is making sure, mg cosine uh, theta, right? So it's this part here of this vector. So <coughs> that equals zero. Now in the uh, x direction, in this one down here, we have a component of gravity. Notice I'm using mg here, the linearized form of gravity. So the idea is the pendulum is short. Uh, and so... Um, and so its height doesn't change in any appreciable manner to warrant using a more sophisticated form. So this, this linearized gravity is fine. So we're already using linearization. Uh, this is going to be an acceleration, though. We're accelerating along this arc, this arc length S. And so it's going to be m s double dot, or m second derivative of S with respect to time, is going to be equal to, well, what do we have here? We just have one force, and that's minus uh, mg sine theta. That's the only force acting. And uh, as we go back and forth here, um, to these minus degrees, it'll change it to positive. So the, the theta is uh, zero right here, positive on this side, negative on this side, and that changes the sign of the component. All right, so this is something we can work with. So m second derivative of s with respect to t equals minus mg sine theta. We can cancel the m's, that's pretty normal. We can also use the fact that arc length is l times the subtended angle. So that means we have, we can pull the l out, there's an l, second derivative of theta with respect to time equals minus g sine theta. We're just doing physics at this point. Um, we can divide by L, so the second derivative of theta with respect to time is minus G over L sine theta. Let's pause for a moment uh, and, and uh, look at the units of this thing. What is this? This is meters per second squared divided by meters. So this is 1 over a second squared. This is a frequency squared. You can write it omega or, or, or f. Um, this is a frequency squared. This is going to tell us something about how often this happens. Now, you can potentially guess the answer here, um, but this is uh, solving. It's a simple, it, but uh, still, it's a it's not it's not simple in a technical sense. Um, a second order differential equation, and uh, this particular equation is hard. This is not simple. Um, we're going to get around that, though, by using a linearization. This ends up being, uh, giving you elliptic integrals and stuff. It's uh, no good. <coughs> so what can we do? Well, um, if we're only interested in small angles, if we're uh, only interested in small angles, then we know that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. 
and we can rewrite this differential equation that we got from Newton's second law as, uh, as this. Oh, and also, um, let's take g over l and uh, call that omega squared, because it has the same units. That might seem a little unmotivated uh, at this moment, uh, but it does have the same units. So here's a differential equation. Uh, there's a function, data is a function of time, there's an unknown function. That's what we. It's not, a, not just a variable, but uh, what is this function that you take two derivatives of and get it back again? If you think about this, this is the sine and cosine kind of stuff. And so one way of writing the solution would be um, something like this. You can check that it works. And uh, this tells you that the pendulum goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, this is called the phase and it depends on the initial angle and this is the angular frequency. This is the uh, amplitude. All right, so in order to solve this equation, we had to use linearization. Trust me, uh, when you get to this point in your math or science career, you'll, you'll see the difference. This linearization makes the problem intractable into something you can have sophomore physics students do without too much trouble. So that's pretty important. We can even go a step further than this, though. So here's another application of, of linearization. The period of oscillation is 2 pi over omega. Right? So this is going to be 2 pi um, yep, just reminding myself, 2 pi times uh, L over G. Now what if, here's the question, what if L changes? That is, uh, and it can be very, very slowly. So it's not a matter of L bouncing back and forth. But uh, if L is made of a metal, and this pendulum undergoes temperature fluctuations, it might slowly expand. And so you go from a pendulum with one length to a pendulum with another. What happens to the resulting period? We can figure this thing out. If we think of this as a function, the period depending on um, length, and we pull out this root g, and this is essentially the square root function. And it's nonlinear for right now, but we can linearize it at L naught. We'll call this the uh, whatever the original length. We've already linearized uh, square root functions, but let's just do it again. So if this is the uh, length we're linearizing at, then t of l naught is going to be 2 pi l naught over g. You need the uh, derivative of period with respect to length. And that's going to be 2 pi root g times 1 half 1 over root l. Um, just think about differentiating square root function. Twos cancel. And then if you evaluate the derivative at the original length, you'll have pi over g l naught. So what do we do with that? Well, um, we have a point and a slope. Oops, sorry, this is kind of messy. So our slope is pi over g l naught, and our point is L naught, which is the original length, times the original period. Well, our linearization as a function of length then is slope times length as it differs from the original length plus the original period. So we could even just call this T naught, the original period. And we can also just call this 
delta L if you want the, the difference. And then uh, we have pi over G L naught times delta L plus T naught. So this is the change in period. As it, uh, oops. This is the, this is the change in period. So for small changes in L. So we can calculate how the period changes depending on these things. Um, so this, is, this can be quite useful. Uh, G is 9.8, of course. You can just plug in the original length, and then you'll have a multiplicative factor, a constant, times whatever your uh, change in length is, um, and that can tell you uh, your change in period. So, you know, hypothetically, uh, whatever, if your original period was uh, one second, and your original length Actually, I should be a little careful here. Suppose your length was one meter. Then we can calculate the original period, which would be two pi, uh, one meter over 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice that the units work out. So that's uh, one divided by 9.8 square rooted times two pi would be uh, 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 2.007 seconds. Uh, let's suppose that due to heat expansion, um, there is a uh, 0.01 meter change, so one centimeter, say. Um, what does that end up being? So we'd have T naught plus the change in length times pi over 9.8 times one meter. Let's figure out what that is. Uh, let's see, square root, uh, 9.8 um, times pi would equal 0 0.01 uh, seconds. So the, this, is the, this would be um, uh, the change. So our, our new period would be 2.007 seconds plus 0 0.01 seconds, so it would be 2.017 seconds. So, and you know, keep in mind, uh, there's also a thing of small or large numbers. Um, this, is, this could be large. Uh, you know, if you're picking up an extra hundredth of a second, then every minute and a half, um, you're progressing uh, one more second. So uh, during the course uh, of an hour, so 60 divided by, say, one and a half, that's an extra uh, 40 seconds uh, every hour um, times 24 is uh, divided by 60, 16 minutes a day. So this is the kind of stuff that can build up and throw things off. So there are several, several uses of linearization. Just a review right from the get-go. Linearization, gravity. Linearization, small angle approximation. Linearization. Uh, seeing how the period depends on small changes in length. Okay? These are all due to small changes, small differences in height, small angles. The linear approximation works very well for small uh, bits.